What's going on everybody and welcome back to the Draft Report. In today's video, we are going to be going over the most underrated players at each position for the 2024 NFL Draft, so let's get into it. Um, we're going to start with running back because I didn't have any quarterbacks that I felt were underrated. Um, we obviously know the top guys, Caleb, Drake, Jaden, um, you know, they're going to, they might go one, two, three in the draft. So I don't feel like they're super underrated. Um, and then but guys like Nix, McCarthy, Penix, um, I'm not like crazy high on any of them. So I don't feel like those guys are underrated. And then like Rattler and Pratt, like I don't have any deep sleepers that I feel super confident. So I didn't decide to do any quarterbacks, but um, anyways, we're going to start with running back uh, Tyrone Cherry C Jr. This is someone who's viewed as like a round five, round six pick um, to most people, but I think he's worth a shot on day two. Um, and you'd be getting a steal if you get him in on day three. This is a guy, um, 5'11", 210, very rocked up build, has decent contact balance. He does run pretty upright, which kind of limits his power. Um, but for being that big, he's very shifty in the open field. He has quick footwork. Um, he's elusive. Uh, he has good long speed, maybe not home run long speed, but I think you're in like the four sixes, uh, four fives, four sixes, somewhere in there. So he has um, very good speed, uh, not lacking in that department. Um, he's very creative when he runs almost to a fault. Sometimes he can kind of get stuck behind the line. Um, but the thing I love with Tracy is this is a guy who's a converted wide receiver from Iowa. And then when he went to Purdue, switched to running back. So he brings all that, um, third down receiving ability with him to the running back position. Um, but kind of gets to use his, uh, after the catch abilities, um, to his fullest extent. So he's a great route runner. Um, he's pretty good with his hands. And I think he would be an immediate impact as a third down back. And I think his size gives him the ability to potentially be a workhorse back if uh, he ends up being that in the future. But I think he provides a decently high floor because I think from day one, he can be that third down satellite back for you out of the backfield, which is rare to get a you know day three player that might be a year one contributor. So I really like Tyrone Tracy. Rashina Lee, um, small school guy from Marshall. Um, this is a guy with really quick footwork. Um, he's pretty short and stocky, good contact balance. Um, not the best receiver. He has a lot of fumbles, but, uh, I really like his footwork and his vision, especially. I think he, he can be a guy that provides value pretty early on as well, um, as another day three option at running back. Uh, we get to wide receiver Malik Washington. Uh, this is one of my guys in the class. And it's probably not smart to bet on him because he is a major size outlier. Uh, he is very small. He's like five foot eight, uh, 170 pounds, something like that. Um, but I just love watching him play. He he is just a freak at everything. I mean, he's a great route runner. He gets open very easily. Um, he's very twitchy, and his change of direction is good. Um, he fights through contact decently well for a guy how of his size. Um, and then after the catch, he's a monster and he catches everything. I mean, he had like one drop in his entire career or something like that. It was insane. Um, yeah, 2.5% drop rate for his career. And he caught 64.7% of his contested catches for someone who's five foot eight. Uh, it is spectacular. I think this is a guy, if he was six foot one, we'd be talking about him in the first round probably. I mean, really the only thing holding him back is his size. And I get that's a big problem, but we've seen guys recently like Tank Dell um, be able to be productive at a smaller size. And I think if you're betting on a guy like Xavier Worthy, who I am higher on than Washington, but if you're betting on him as like a first round prospect, I don't see why you wouldn't have Washington up there as well. Um, like there's not a ton to hate with him um, besides just his size, which kind of limits him to a slot role. But uh, he's just someone I want to do well in the NFL. And I, I think he is kind of what people want Malachi Corley to be in a way where he's this great after the catch guy, but also is good before the catch. And Corley uh, just doesn't have that the same route running and uh, hands. So I see no reason why Washington shouldn't go over Malachi Corley. He's probably the better athlete too. So big fan of Malik Washington. Um, honorable mention Jermaine Burton. This is a guy who um, I think if, he didn't have some character concerns, might be a second round pick pretty easily. I still think he could should go second round um, because he's very talented. He's kind of this tall, skinny receiver that has great speed and pretty good route running chops. And then he'll also go up and moss you um, for someone who's pretty skinny and lacks physicality. I really like um, how he attacks the catch point. So all around... I kind of compare him to Troy Franklin as a player and Burton just has way better hands. So it's like as on the field, I like Burton a lot, but he has some character concerns. Um, 
seemed like he got kind of put in the doghouse in multiple places. And then when they lost a game in Alabama, he like punched a fan that was rushing onto the field. So not good stuff. Um, but if the, you know, off the field stuff kind of checks out for teams, I think he's worth a shot in the second round. Um, we get to tight end Jared Wiley. This is another um, guy I have pretty big difference than the consensus board. Um, I have him as a top 100 prospect, a guy that maybe should go uh, late day three, but he's kind of viewed as a fourth, fifth round guy. And I get it. His production wasn't amazing in college. Um, he had some games like against Baylor. He had like 170 yards or something like that. Um, so that was a good game. Uh, but it just the consistency wasn't there. He is a massive guy, though. He's like six foot six, two hundred and forty five pounds, with a ton of room to add to his frame, and that's kind of why I like him. Like if he bulks up and gets up to like two sixty five, he can really be a threat as a blocker, um, because that's really the biggest problem with him right now is. For being such a big guy, uh, he kind of lacks some physicality blocking and his technique isn't very good. So he can't really be trusted as, as an inline role right now. Um, but as a receiver, I really like him. Uh, he might be a little stiff on his route breaks because he is 6'6", but he's pretty physical at the catch point. He has good hands. Um, he's a good route runner for the most part. Um, and he has good speed to carry the seam. So I really like him. He's not going to provide a ton after the catch, but um, all these receivers outside of Bowers are kind of the same to me where – they're good receivers and not much in the blocking. And Wiley is the only one that I really can project to maybe have a future as blocking. And the other guy we're going to talk about, Theo Johnson. Um, but guys like Sinnott and Jatavion Sanders, um, they just don't have really any ability to become a good blocker because they're kind of maxed out size-wise. But I think Wiley, um, he definitely has some room to add to his frame. So uh, if he does that, maybe he can become a good blocker. Uh, Theo Johnson, this dude's a freak of nature athlete. He had a great uh, combine. Uh, he didn't have a ton of production in college, but I like his hands for the most part. He could attack the ball a little more physically, um, but he runs crisp routes, and he is actually a good blocker. He's like 260 and can block pretty well. Um, so Theo Johnson's someone I like, and he's kind of a, if I'm taking a dart throw at tight end, which is what all these guys are, Theo is the best athlete, so I'd probably um, roll the dice on him. Uh, we get to offensive line, Kyron Amagaji uh, from Yale. Uh, this is someone who I think should be a surefire early round two pick. Um, he has everything you want. He is super long. He has like 36 inch arms. Um, he's a pretty good athlete and I didn't really see much technique that can stop him from being a productive player. Yes, he played at Yale. So just being long and a good athlete is going to get you by there. But he also had some technical stuff that I liked. Um, he could clean up his hand usage for sure. But for the most part, Kyron Amagaji is someone that I think it's, be a contributor from day one and has very high upside because of his athletic and uh, length um, gifts. And then Roger Rosengarten, um, he reminds me, or he doesn't remind me, but he's very similar to Troy Fatanu, who's going like three rounds ahead of him. And obviously Fatanu is the better player, but Rosengarten's kind of that same mold of like a freak athlete that maybe needs to add a little more physicality to his game. Um, but Rosengarten is like a day three pick to a lot of people, and I, I think he should be. Um, for sure, a day two, pretty like mid early day two, um, he could be a second rounder for sure um, because he does have special movement skills. So I think he's a little underrated. Uh, we get to guard Christian Haynes. You'll notice I kind of like these small school linemen. Um, it's easy to dominate at these levels, but I think there's some projectable traits here as well. Uh, Christian Haynes, similar to Amagaji, he's pretty long, he's athletic, he's big, but I like his strength at the point of attack. He's pretty powerful, um, but where he really excels is when he gets out and blocks in space, especially on like outside zone. Um, he's excellent at sealing defenders off in that because he has pretty good length for the guard position, um, but then also has the quickness and agility to get around and really seal players off. So I think in an outside zone scheme, uh, it wouldn't be a reach to take this guy in the first round if you need an interior guy. Um, it's not going to happen, but uh, early day two, if you are an outside zone heavy scheme, um, I really like Christian Haynes for you. Um, and then Mason McCormick's another one. He's uh, more of a day three guy. Maybe he could sneak in back half a day two, but uh, he's an athlete. He had the highest RAS score of any um, offensive lineman at the combine, I believe. Um, and he's just a freak athlete. The athleticism maybe doesn't show up quite as much on film, but uh, he is pretty powerful and athletic overall, but there's some technical things that he needs to clean up. He's not a guy that's ready to start from day one, but I like Mason McCormick um, as a day three dart throw for sure. Um, defensive line, this is the one that I think I'm the most different from consensus on. Makai Wingo, I have him as a potential second round pick, and he's viewed as like mid-day three. I mean, this guy is a freak. Um, 
He's not that big. He's only like 6'1", 280 um, at the defensive line position, which is kind of concerning. But he plays a little bigger, I think, because he does have this natural leverage advantage because he's kind of short and stubby. He can kind of get under guys, and he's so quick off the ball um, that he just kind of gets into guys' pads before they can really make an adjustment to it. Uh, so Makai Wingo is someone that I just love watching, and I don't know if he'll necessarily translate to the NFL, but I watch him and I kind of see like – Aaron Donald particles like he's not going to be Aaron Donald but you kind of see this um short stocky guy that has a little more pop at the point of attack than you would expect and he just flies off the ball he's super athletic um Wingo is someone that you can put at nose tackle and he like handles doubles but then he also kicks out and plays edge and can kind of bend the arc a little bit so I just think this dude's a freak athlete and someone that I'd be willing to take pretty early on just because of the the tools he has I don't really know where he fits in because he's kind of positionless but he is such a good athlete and um anytime you have a chance to be an Aaron Donald type player I would take it and I understand he's not gonna be Aaron Donald but I just see a little bit of Aaron Donald in him, and I'm willing to take a shot on him on day two for sure. Uh, Ruka Rororororo, I don't know how to say that name. It's fun to say, but though, uh, from Clemson. Uh, this is a guy that's bigger than Wingo. He's like 6'3", 295 maybe, maybe a little less than that, but he is pretty similar athletically to Wingo. Um, I'm higher on Aurororororo. Um I think he can hold his own against the run pretty well. Um, I think he can get to the passer pretty well. He's a good athlete. He's long. Um, but he just didn't have the production. He's kind of far away technically. But um, I think he kind of gets thrown into that like third, fourth round. And I think he should be a day, a second round pick for sure um, because of the upside he has as a three technique. Um, we get to edge Marshawn Nealand, another small school guy. Um, both of my edges are small, small school guys uh, from Western Michigan. Uh, this is your prototypical uh, four, three end, uh, just powerful, but he also is a pretty good athlete. I don't think he's someone you want as a stand up rusher. Cause he is just a little bit stiff, but man, he explodes off the ball and he's pretty long. He's powerful, powerful at the point of attack. I love him against the run. Um, he's a guy I know can hold up on all three downs, which I love in an edge rusher. Um, and I honestly don't see him getting a ton of first round height, but it would not surprise me um, because he is a freak athlete. He had like a nine, nine something RAS score. Um, and he's someone that's pretty projectable because he does have that power profile and you're thinking, okay, maybe I can add some moves to him and he can be a true uh, threat. So I kind of think of him as like, um, you know, FCS Jared verse in a way, uh, because or I guess Western Michigan's not FCS, but you know what I mean? Um, uh, small school, Jared verse, like he's not as good as verse, but that kind of powerful four, three end uh, that get explodes off the ball. I'm just like, I don't think it should be like a whole 40 spots different between him and verse on a big board. Like to me, it's only like 20 spots different. Um, and Nealand, if you come away from the first round with Nealand, I would not be super disappointed. Uh, he's a guy that if you can get him in the third round, like big boards are saying, I would be, I would love that. And then Jalix Hunt, this is a guy that's really far away from being anything. Um, but as a fourth round guy, he's a freak athlete. Um, he's a converted safety from Cornell and he transferred to Houston Christian and absolutely dominated from the edge there. So he's really new to the position, but he has, he's more refined than you would expect for someone that's that new to the position. Um, and he just, if, you know, he's a freak athlete, uh, like 250 pounds, long arms, explodes off the ball, maybe a little stiffer than you'd like, but um, I think any defensive line coach would love to bring him in. And, you know, you take a dart throw on a guy like that on day three, I'd much rather do that than some safe backup option. You know, Hunt's either going to work out or he's going to be cut in a year, you know, like he's one of those developmental guys, but if he hits, he has a pretty high ceiling. Uh, we get to cornerback. I don't have any linebackers that I'm really a huge fan of. Uh, Max Melton. Uh, this is a guy that I think another one like Nealand, not getting a ton of first round hype, but he could be a first round pick in my opinion. Uh, freak, freak athlete. Uh, he had the third longest broad jump of any cornerback since like 1990 at the combine. Um, super fast 40 yard dash. And what I love about him is he has long arms. So he's projectable to press his technique now isn't great, but he kind of got by in college just with athleticism. Uh, the only thing that I really see as a true weakness is his play strength and then just his overall technique. But I mean, if a quarterback coach can just clean it up to be like average technique wise, he's such a awesome athlete and he plays very hard. He's doesn't mind being physical. So I think Melton is someone that 
you know, he's a developmental guy. Probably don't want him starting early on in his career, but you know, come year two, year three, you could be looking at a star cornerback. And uh, anytime you have a chance to get that, a true shutdown guy, I would love to take that. I like his instincts for the most part. So he's a smart, physical player that just needs to learn how to play the position a little more. Um, and then Renardo Green, uh, this is kind of poor man's Kool-Aid McKinstry. He's great in press coverage. He just like lived in press coverage at Florida State. Um, he shut down Malik Neighbors in the game they played. He's not a great athlete, and he gets really grabby downfield, but as a second round pick for a team that wants to run a lot of man coverage, I think he'd be good. It's really hard to find um, true press coverage corners uh, late in the draft, and I think Green in the second round would be a steal for a team that just wants, uh, you know, a very good man coverage cornerback. Even though he might not play the run super great, and his instincts are lacking in zone. I mean, if you just want to stick, if you want a cornerback too that you can stick and press and be comfortable with, I mean, I'd take Green, and that's pretty rare to find. Uh, last position here, Javon Bullard from Georgia. Um, this is a guy, he's listed at safety, but I think he's going to be more of a uh, slot nickel type in the league. But, man, you see a guy like Brian Branch last year and how much he added to that Lions defense. And I think Bullard's the same type of guy. Super smart, super instinctual, knows where to be, and just attacks the football. He's physical. He doesn't mind getting dirty. Um, he's a smallish guy, and he's not the greatest athlete so that's why he's more of a second round guy to me compared to branch who was a first round guy to me last year even though he won in the second um but bullard he's just someone you want on your football team he plays the game the right way he's super smart um and he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. You can put him over the top at safety. He has range. But you can also put him in the slot because he defends the run well. And he plays man coverage on receivers well. I think he is uh, just great. Outside of like Cooper DeJean, if you just want an all-around defensive weapon, uh, Bullard would be my second choice outside of DeJean. Um, and then Cole Bishop. Uh, this is someone I turned on the tape. And like the first 10 plays, he had like three forced fumbles and like a sack and I'm like this dude is a freak and then I kind of watch more and I'm like okay he doesn't have the greatest range and he has super short arms like sub 30 inch arms um so he uh gets bullied a little bit at the point of attack if he can't make first contact which is tough um so getting off of blocks in the run game isn't great but I just like the way he plays he's another one like Bullard that's smart he knows where to be and he's physical he just He's someone I want to like a lot more, but the arm length and the athleticism, I just can't bet that much on him. Um, but Bishop is someone that I just want to see have success because he's such a fun player to watch. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for the video. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, this one should be a little more positive because I'm giving praise to players compared to... Um, you know, kind of talking crap about them in the last video, but uh, please let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.